Please turn with me to the book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 3, verse 18, and Genesis chapter 39, verse, from verse 20. 2 Thessalonians, chapter 3, verse 18, Genesis chapter 39, from verse 20. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in the prison. But the Lord, the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison and whatsoever they did there he was the doer of it the keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the lord was with him and that which he did the lord made it pros to, to prosper let us pray O oh, gracious god almighty we thank you for your mercy for your grace we thank you Above all, for your love, love that you sent your son, your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to come to this earth, born of the Virgin Mary, born full man and full God, that he may live to die on the cross, that he would shed his blood, that we may have our sins cleansed and washed away and forgiven. He was buried, and on the third day, you raised him from the dead through the power of the Holy Spirit. He died once. He will never die again. And he is coming and returning again to pick us up in the clouds that we may be with him for eternity. And Father, because of your love, your grace, and your mercy, Father, I thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the many blessings this past week, even this very morning that you have given us the breath of life. And Father, I thank you, Lord, above all for everlasting life through your Son, Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one coming unto you except through him and by him. Father, we continue to lift up, Lord, those who are sick and ill. If any are ill this morning, may they know that by the stripes of Jesus they can receive your healing. We thank you, Lord, and we continue to lift up unto you, Brother Richard, Sister Emilita, Brother Kim Chanwa, Brother Choron, Sister Victoria, Sister Pick, David Chonosanim, Esther Samanim's mother, Wanmi Samanim's father, Sister Rachel's father, and Pastor Jesse. And by the stripes of Jesus and all those who need your healing, may they know that who sh by whose stripes they are healed. And Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for peace. I pray, Lord, for marriages, that there should be peace in the marriages, peace in family relationships, parents and children, children and parents, among siblings as well. Peace in this and unity in this body of believers and father i thank you god almighty you're a great wonderful god we pray for peace in jerusalem peace on the korean peninsula peace in nigeria kenya south sudan the republic of the philippines and the united states of america father we pray lord for wisdom and protection for the presidents and their parents their families, pray for 100% full-time and gainful employment for every member in Victory Christian Fellowship. May they know that you are the one that opens up the opportunity. You open up doors. May they seek you. And Father, I pray, Lord, that out of their hearts of thanksgiving, that there should be 100% faithful service of all VCF members in the VCF ministries. Father, we do invite the presence of your Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill our hearts now and quicken our minds and our spirit and our 
that we may receive all that you have for us, that we will be changed and transformed. And we do ask that your angels protect this gathering, protect us against demonic attacks, interferences, or disturbances. Father, we stand here, Lord, and we command all distractions, all demonic spirits to depart right now in Jesus' name. And Father, may we freely enter into your presence. And I ask that you anoint me with your, with your Holy Spirit, that your word shall go forth with power. And we thank you, we praise you, we give you all the glory, all the honor, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. I give the Lord a praise clap. For God is good and all the time. Okay, look at someone and say, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. We're going to talk about grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is part two. When I look back in my life, if, if I had understood grace, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, life would have been so much more joyful and um, um, more, uh, more joyful than, than, than what I experienced. You know, we, we go through things, we go through our life, and we struggle a lot. And, and we try to find that right formula and the right way of doing things. But if you would learn about the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, that it is he that gives you the grace, and then you're able to flow in this grace. Think of grace as a river where you flow in his grace. When you're able to flow in his grace, even though there might be rocks in the way of the river, there might be twigs or branches, you're able to overcome that and, and flow and, and be and and receive all that God has for you. So much people are like salmon. You know salmon? They go upstream. They're fighting against the stream. The water is coming down, but their lives are like salmon that are going up and they fight. They fight, always fight and struggle. You can make it to the top. You can make it if you struggle hard, hard enough. The people of Babylon, when they were, were trying to um, to uh, build Babylon, God knew that they could, the Tower of Babylon, they, he knew that they could build it. So if you put your, yourself to it, self-will, and we get all this positive thinking and all this, uh, these things about uh, if you put your mind to it and all that, you can, you can do things and you will it. Things can happen. You can make things happen. But when you flow in God's grace, and I liken this flowing and walking in God's grace as probably all of us have been in Incheon Airport. Amen? So as you get off the plane, there is an escalator. Normally escalators go up or go down, right, if you go to E-Mart. But this escalator is a flat escalator, right? And you can choose to walk on the side on the carpet, right? But there's something called friction and all that kind of stuff. If you walk on that escalator, that you'll be able to, to flow. You'll be able to walk smoothly. So though you are walking, though you are making an effort, the, the flow or the, the, the path it, it seems simpler, if you understand what I'm saying. You can struggle against that carpet and think of life as that way. A lot, a lot of people struggle, so they go through it, and yeah, you can make it. But I'd rather walk in the grace of God on that escalator of life because God gives a grace and be able to, we can turn the heat off for a little while. So you can walk in his grace and it, it's much simpler. And uh, if, if I had understood that, I know that a lot of the struggles that I went through were unnecessary. And we don't like to struggle, but this is not to say that you don't work hard or you don't, you don't put out an effort. But God is like, the, the wind, if you've been on a sailboat before, you're catching the wind, and the wind is, um, it hits the sail, and then takes you, and moves you in a, in a, in a smoother, and a more delightful way than going against the wind, and then struggling through that. So that, that's what many of our lives are all about, because we don't understand about God's grace. And this is not like um, what people think, well, I just want to struggle through it and all that. Go ahead. If you want to go struggle, go ahead. 
You can continue on with the life that you had. But as Christians, God gives us grace. And your life can be a whole lot better because if, if your life is always struggling, this is so hard to really serve the Lord. And, and that's what I hope your desire is, is because you're so thankful to God because he saved you, right, through your son Jesus Christ, that you want to serve the Lord. But if your life is all about struggles, 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 and, and they're real, you know, um, then how are you going to focus on the Lord? How are you going to focus on the Lord? Because you're just worried about the cares of this world. So this is not only reserved for pastors, okay? If, I, if it was only for me, and then, then I wouldn't be sharing this. But this is for all believers. Look at, look at someone here. I said, this is for all believers. Amen? So you can get a part of this. Well, uh, you know, we shortchange God. God is infinite. God, God's kingdom is huge. And we're joint heirs, co-heirs of the kingdom. God wants to give you. He has plenty to give you, to give me, to give all the believers. Amen? So it's not where it's, it's a sign of weakness or a sign of um, you, you're, you're not good enough or strong enough or anything like that. No. So many people will put all this emphasis on trying to do it on their own. And I just look back in my life. If I had known this decades ago, things would have been a lot better from the beginning. Amen? So you can, you can start now. That's the great thing. Don't wait till sunset in your life and say, oh, I should have listened to pastor. Too late already because you went through all the struggles. We don't need to be a hero about how the struggles, all that. No. We need to be overcomers. Amen? And then walk, and then walking in his grace, living in his grace, is being an overcomer. Amen? So that's the encouragement I want to give you. There was a guy named Joseph. Joseph, the, the story of uh, Joseph, who was one of the 12 patriarchs. He was, he was um, Jacob, or Israel's favorite son. He was the one with that, uh, that coat of many colors. And that, that symbolized the favor that he had with his father. However, comma, his brothers were jealous of him. Jealous because, one, he, got, he had the favor of his father, Jacob, who was later called Israel. And, and so they, they hated him. You know, because they, they had different mothers. Some of them had different mothers, except Benjamin was his uh, same mother. But uh, um, they hated him. And there's jealousy in this world. Well, one day they decided, we're going to kill this guy here. So they were out there doing whatever they were doing with the sheep or whatever, the goats. And Joseph ran out with his uh, beautiful coat of many colors because the father Israel was afraid uh, Jacob was concerned about them so he ran out to them and then they all then they plotted they said now is the time we're going to kill him we will kill him and but uh, one of the the brothers Judah I believe says no no let's not kill him so instead what they did was they threw him in a deep well and just say um, they, they go back let him starve or let him die I didn't know brothers could be like that. Amen? You don't have brother, siblings that, that want to kill you, right? But they wanted to kill him. They was, this is not like, well, let's teach him a lesson. They wanted to terminate him. So then instead of having 12 of the sons, there will be only 11 sons. But we know that that didn't happen. So they saw these um, traders come in, I guess these Ishmaelites, and then they, they sold Jacob, uh, jo excuse me, Joseph into slavery. So they sold him. They got some money for it. So he goes off to Egypt. And now they say that we're done with him. No more of this Joseph. He's dead. We just go back to our father and say that the animals ate him or something like that. So Joseph uh, is auctioned off, and he becomes a slave of a man named Potiphar. And Potiphar is one of the uh, captains of the, the Egyptian army. He's a high-ranking guy. So 
God will give him favor in there. So he begins to um, be like the head of the household. Still, he's a, he's a servant, he's a slave, he has no rights, but God gave him favor with Potiphar. And then now we see here, picking it up, um, where uh, Deacon Charles read that he was, Joseph was framed for committing a crime which he did not do, but Potiphar is angry because, you know, Joseph, he felt, he believed Joseph did something against his wife, so he threw Joseph into the jail. Again, your life can be from bad to worse. doesn't have to get better, you understand? People think, oh, my life has to get better. No, it doesn't have to get better. I've seen people where their life got worse and worse and worse, and then they die, okay? So I guess death is probably the victory, you know, if they believe it. But, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about people that are alive, okay? I'm not talking about, like, okay, your life got bad and then worse, and then you died and you went to heaven. That's not what we're talking about this morning. We're talking about where you're here in this point. God says, I got more, more for you in this world because you're going to do great and wonderful things for me. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. So Joseph, now, from bad, he's, he's a, he got sold into slavery. He, and then now he is in jail. So his life now got worse, right? Jail. No cable TV, no, no um, you know, weight room and all that kind of stuff. He's just in jail. But as Deacon Charles read, the master or the jailkeeper, the jailkeeper, um, God showed favor. J God was with Joseph even in the prison. And he sh showed him mercy. Mercy is also kindness and favor. Okay, that's what mercy means. And he gave him favor, graciousness, kindness, grace in the sight of the keeper of the prison. One thing that I want you to understand is this. We have been seeking man's favor, right? And so you go to work, you have a supervisor, a commander, a, a whatever, a boss or whatever it is, and we're all really nice to the boss, right? Ah, so, but then when you turn, your face just turns like sour, right? Uh, yeah, but in front of there, oh, you smile because you want to be favored, right? Because you want continued employment, amen? My son, he was uh, the older one. He was younger, uh, very young at that time, right? Six or seven or something like that. So we're walking together, and then he saw people in the front, somebody in front of us walking and another person walking. We didn't know these people. So the person walking, he could see the face, and they, they said hi to each other. They were smiling, and then all of a sudden they turned their face like, like this, right? So my son said, Daddy, how come these people smile and then when they, as soon as they, they pass the person, they make this mean face. I said, well, you know, that's people because we're all conditioned to be nice to people, right? And all that, right? So, we, you know, after the benediction, and you're all smiling and all, but then you're walking downstairs and like, I wonder what kind of food we're going to have today. Whoa, is, is that it? That's all? But then when you see each other, hi, how are you? You ever, you ever got into a, a fight with somebody or you're fighting at home and all that and the phone rings? Hello? All of a sudden you change, right? So anyway, I don't know how I got into this, but Joseph, right, is in prison. And he's thinking, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? You know, first I get thrown down into this deep well, right? They, and my brother want to kill me. They want me to starve to death. Next thing you know, I become a, a, a servant, a slave of the Potiphar. Then I get framed, and now here I am in prison. You know, he could have been so sad about himself, right? Well, woe is me. Woe is me. You know how we blame everybody else? Woe is me. Oh, my life is so hard and difficult and all that. But the great thing is the Lord, the Bible says, was with Joseph. Okay? So the key point about this message is 
the Lord being with us. Amen? All of us say, when we pray, we ask Jesus into our life. Where's Jesus? Some of you point up in the sky. No, no. He's in your heart. Amen? Okay, so Jesus is in your heart, so you know God is with you. But, Pastor, how come I don't have all this favor? I don't have all this grace. Why? Okay, I'm going to show you this morning why you're not getting God's grace. You're not walking on that escalator. You're not flowing in the river and enjoying all God's uh, blessings. God wants to bless you, yes, in heaven, guaranteed. Okay, but he also wants to bless you here on earth. Amen? Wow, well, I just want to suffer in life. And, and then when I go to heaven, I'll get all these blessings. We don't need any heroes, please. No heroes. You can get God's blessings now on this earth. Amen? Just because you suffer, that doesn't mean you're going to get a blessing because some of us become bitter when we start suffering. We get so angry and like, ah, I just can't wait to heaven. And then you're going to see Jesus and then you're going to smile. Oh, hi, yes, man. But your whole life, bitter. Look at somebody and just smile because somebody needs to see a smiling face. Show some teeth. Okay. Amen. All right. So some of us, we, we, our lives are like just so angry. You ever meet angry people? Always bitter and dried lips and, well, not because they didn't use chapstick, but you understand. Just just the frown and the squint and the wrinkled eyes. Then they got to go down to Kangnam and they get plastic surgery and fix their eyes because they got to take away the, the wrinkles in their eyes. You know, if you had joy in your life and the love of God in your life and, and all that and the peace and his grace, you don't need to go to Kangnam and go get your eyes, uh, the wrinkles taken away. Amen? Don't look at anybody's eyes. So, Joseph was given, was made, was in charge, and, and the jailkeeper gave him everything to be, to, to take care of, because God not only was with Joseph and gave him his, God's mercy, but God gave, um, was able to, and grace, was able to, to make the jailkeeper have grace for uh, Joseph. You understand? There's, there's favor with God and favor with man. But what the point that we misunderstand is that this favor and this grace is not because we, we're so nice people and all that. Of course, as Christians, you're going to do excellence, you're going to do well, and you're going to do your best, right? But there are cases where people have done their best, but because they don't have God's favor and man's favor, they continue on this struggle. But God, being with Joseph, gave Joseph favor in the sight of man, uh, in, a, in the sight of a jailkeeper. The jailkeeper owes Joseph nothing. He, he's a prisoner. Joseph can't demand anything from him because he's a prisoner, right? Prisoners have no rights. They had, but then they did something bad. In Joseph's case, he didn't do anything bad. But when you become a prisoner, you had all the rights on the outside. Now you come into the prison, then here, you follow these rules, and, and this is the deal here. Next time, don't do anything bad, right? So, so what happened is, even in that prison cell or whatever it was, that community, Joseph had favor from the jailkeeper. And he, he allowed him to do all these things. Now, if Joseph had died in, in jail, that's probably not a good thing to pass on to his children and grandchildren. Yeah, well, I was the head, uh, the second in charge in the jail. You know, that's really not something to brag about, right? You know what I mean? Like, I was in jail, but I was the second man in charge. No. We know the story. Later on, he's going to become the second to Pharaoh, right? But it's that favor that God granted him. The Lord Jesus Christ, full God, full man, right? There's no diluting here. In Luke 2.52, and Jesus increased in wisdom 
in stature, and, and check this out, and in favor with God and man. So, well, when he entered into the ministry, he had people that hated him, right, that, to the point of wanting him to be crucified on a cross. But Jesus grew in favor with God and man. God the Father gave God the Son favor, right, with him and then also with man. So up to the age of 30, when Jesus grew up in the town of Nazareth, he had favor with uh, the people around him, the neighbors, and everything else. Later on, they're going to become temporarily his enemy, but then they're going to realize later on after he dies and resurrects that he is a son of God, hopefully. We don't know the whole story about that. But you can have favor first. The favor needs to be with God because Jesus, one, submitted unto God. He obeyed God, the Father. Obedience will bring this favor. Disobedience will bring disfavor with God. A lot of people will think um, also wrongly that all you have to do is have favor with God. That's not correct. Because when you have favor with God is because you are obeying him, right? And you're following him. He also will grant you favor with man. And then that applies to our lives, um, whatever it is, in our neighborhoods, in our workplaces, you know, if you're struggling and you're battling against your supervisor, maybe you got a bad one, okay? Maybe, maybe he's not, he or she is not nice to you, right? But if there's a trend where the one before also was pretty bad and the one before that was pretty bad and then the one before that was pretty bad, then, then there's some kind of something here, a pattern that's going on. So every single supervisor, boss, CEO, or, or commander, or whatever, was all bad. They were all bad people, amen? Wait a minute. Maybe you didn't have favor. Maybe you're struggling right now. Maybe there's a difficulty here. You don't have favor. Why? Why? Because now, one, we know we don't, we're not obeying God. That's point number one. You know, you can live your life the way you want to, right? I like to live my life following the Word of God. And if God is going to give me favor, first with Him, that's, that's what I care about, number one. But also, number two, if I can get favor with man, not because um, I'm giving them, you know, candy or something and, and trying to be overly like, um, um, you know what I'm talking about, where, where you are just like, ingratiating yourself that's a that's a 25 cent word ingratiating me where you just want to just only uh, focus on them and all that and everybody else you don't care but the people that you know are going to be over you you're going to be really nice to them you're not really nice normally to other people but you're just nice to them we don't have to ingratiate ourselves to people okay we just need to be the godly person that's going to walk and do the best, whatever you're supposed to be doing. God, you have favor with God, and then you have favor with man. God gives in their eyes, these people, uh, favor for you. And when you have that, life can be so much smoother. Okay? So much smoother. Now you're going with the flow. But we got to get there. We got to figure out how can I get God's grace and favor, right? Even with your enemies. In the book of Esther, there was a man named Haman, okay? And he um, was one next to the king, pretty high up there. He was a high um, official in the, um, in the, in the, the Persian, whatever, media, um, Persia uh, kingdom. And he had access to the king. This guy had access to the king. However, he would be walking, you know, to the, to the gate, to the king, uh, to the castle, whatever they had. And he would see this guy named Mordecai. Mordecai was a Jew. 
Mordecai actually was the cousin, I believe, of Esther, okay? He was a cousin. He had, uh, Esther's mother and father had passed away early for whatever reason. So he kind of like raised up his cousin. And Esther happened to be the queen, okay? But Mordecai will be on the outside because not everybody's allowed to go in to see the king. But this Haman guy, who was a high official, would walk in and out. And all the people would be standing up and bowing to Haman because they respected his official daughter. But Mordecai was like, you know, kind of despised this guy. Well, the, it was a mutual feeling. Haman despised Mordecai. Mordecai despised Haman. And anyway, so one day he asked the king that um, uh, the king was, um, was, um, couldn't sleep that night. So he said, go check the books, the royal records, and, 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 and tell me what was given to Mordecai, right? When Mordecai um, had, um, had, had spoken about these two, two eunuchs, whatever, that tried to um, kill the king. And then they, they searched the records, and they said, nothing was given to Mordecai. So Haman comes in, and the king says, what? should I give to someone, he didn't mention Mordecai's name, what should I give to someone that I want to honor, uh, give him the highest honor, and so Morde uh, Haman, the guy who ate Mordecai, felt like, oh, thought that that was for him, so he said, uh, well, you should put him on a horse, and then people should run, and then they should say, um, you know, say good things about him, so we see here in Esther 6.10, that the king said to Haman, Make haste and take the apparel and the horse, as thou hast said, and do even so to Mordecai the Jew, that sitteth at the king's gate. Let nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken. Then took Haman the apparel and the horse, and arrayed Mordecai, and brought him on horseback through the street of the city, and proclaimed before him, Thus shall be done unto the man whom the king delighted to honor. Though Haman hated and despised Mordecai, he was the one that had to, um, to, to glorify Mordecai, put him on the horse, the king's horse, and, and, and lift him up. See, even if you have enemies, and don't worry if you've got enemies, because okay, some people say, I don't have enemies. You know, okay, maybe, maybe you don't have enemies. But you know what? Let me tell you a secret. The Lord Jesus Christ had enemies. So... If you don't have enemies, that's fine. You can, you can, you can say that, and I'm not going to doubt you that you don't have enemies. So even your enemies cannot touch you because you have God's grace. Grace is also his, his, his like protection, his favor, because God can give in, in the sight of your enemies favor, okay? Favor towards you. And so everybody thinks that we got to hate our enemies. That's why Jesus says, pray for your enemies, bless your enemies, love your enemies. You know, a lot of times we, we look at enemies and we only think bad things about them. Don't think bad things about them because God can give you favor even in the sight of your enemies. Amen? Proverbs 16, 7 says, when a man's way Ways please the Lord, he make it even his enemies, somebody say enemies, even his enemies to be at peace with him. So they can still remain and be your enemy. Do you understand? It's not like, oh, so, oh I love you and I love you. And, oh, no, no. Sometimes that happens when we can all get together and, um, you know, be we love one another and all that, forgive one another. But there are sometimes that somebody's just going to hate you, just like they hated Joseph, right? They hated him to the point of, we're going to kill you, Joseph. We're not just going to uh, hurt you. We want to kill you, okay? So, okay, that's, that's the extreme of an enemy. But we have enemies. And if you don't have enemies, this is not for you. This, this part is not for you. But if you got enemies, when you follow the Lord's ways, even your enemies can be at peace with you. Even God can give your enemies uh, 
uh, in their eyes give you favor with them. Amen? Okay, let me just conclude with this written here. This is how you can receive God's grace and favor, okay? Let's hear the drum rolls. Da, 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 da. In James 4, 9, or 6, excuse me. But he give it more grace. Somebody said that. He give it more grace. Okay, grace, right? Favor. Wherefore he said, God resisted the proud, but give it grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. So we stop there. We as believers need to be humble. When you are humble, God is drawn and attracted to you. When you are proud, God resists you. Do you understand? As believers, yes, Jesus is in us and all that. But to get his grace and to get his favor... We need to be people that are walking in humility. You know, in this world, it's all about competition. There's a spirit of competition. And people want to challenge one another. I got this better than you. I got more. I got whatever. All that kind of competition. And then, so we challenge each other. But God is saying the opposite. Be humble. Humble. And my definition of humble is not just like, oh, yes, yes, yes. And people run over you. Jesus, he talked straight in the face of people, right? He said, you vipers, you, you, you know, hypocrites. He wasn't only like, oh, yes, hi, hello, I'm the son of God, oh, yes. No. So humble doesn't mean false humility. Some people walk around like, oh, I got to be quiet a lot. Because you could be somebody inside, like, oh, yes, yes. But inside, just like this lion, this tiger, oh, Ah, just waiting to to just to to pounce on somebody, but outside, oh yes, hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. Yes, oh praise the Lord. Ah. But inside, if if we were to look with the flashlight in you, okay, who are you? Look at someone and say, who am I? Who am I? Okay. Anyway. So be humble. What humble is, my definition of humble, is knowing that without Jesus, you can do nothing. That's what humble is. If, well, I did it because I'm smart enough, God gave you intelligence. Well, I got out of this. God gave you that, okay? So be humble and just know where you receive all this from. Obey the word of God. That's what it is. Submitting unto God is submitting unto the word of God. But I don't want to be weak and all that. Okay, then you're not going to receive God's grace. And you're going to be that one, that salmon, that's always uh, struggling up the water. And your whole life is going to be like that. All these wrinkles, all this stress, ulcers, sickness and all that. When you could be flowing in this beautiful river of God, in his grace. And then you see, you know, Joseph had all the blessings, but he remained humble. He became a man of authority, where if he said this here, that, you know, if I was Joseph and Potiphar's wife had framed me, I'd say, come here, come here. I'm, I'm second in charge now. You lied, right? Now you're going to pay. Right? That's what we would do. But the Bible does not reflect that, that he had revenge over Potiphar's wife because he saw all these things. He could have nailed his brothers, the one that caused him all that grief, right? But he didn't because he said, I see now all these things happen so that the entire nation of Israel could be saved because later on they're going to go through that uh, seven years of drought, right, of famine. But because they had saved up the seven years of bumper crop, they were able to, to make it through. 
And Egypt became one of the greatest nations at that time. Okay, not now, but at that time. Because Joseph had the wisdom and, God, and God's grace and God's favor. And that's what we can have. You and I can have and all believers can have. If we do and we follow, we obey and we, are, we stay humble, knowing where, where everything comes from. All this blessing comes from God. Now, the next step is when we receive, we also need to give too, okay? Some people just like, we just squirrel around just like my two sons when they went and they had all this candy and they all keep the candy to themselves. Many of us keep all the candy to ourselves. Time to share. Close your hands. Make a fist. Okay, we need to do this. Open up. Open up your hands. We need to give as well. When God blesses you, let's be people that are going to give and share his, his grace, his favor, his blessings with others as well. Amen? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. Father, let us flow in your grace. It is you who gives us grace. It is you that, who gives us grace with other people as well. Let us not... Um, seek to 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 be uh, to get people's favor but to seek you to get your favor and you will give us favor in our uh, the eyes of others even our enemies and i thank you lord we praise you in jesus name amen with us just please come forward for the receiving